If you've been playing Minecraft for a while, chances are you're at least vaguely familiar with the Legacy Console Editions. These were versions of Minecraft on home consoles like the Xbox 360, Wii U, PS4, and if you're like me and a lot of other people, you probably have some really fond memories of those days. However, those versions were all eventually phased out and discontinued for the Bedrock version of the game, which I think a lot of people will agree with me just really doesn't have the same feel to it. But this mod brings it all back. Now this mod is called Legacy 4J and it's very, very new. You can see that the mod rinse post is actually only about four months old. Now I'm going to assume most of you have probably downloaded a mod before, but just in case you haven't, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is download the version you want. Personally, I prefer Fabric. You're going to need this. You're going to need the Architecture API just so it works correctly. And then either Fabric itself, you can just download it and then run it and just install the version you want. This mod is only up to 1.20.4 at the moment, but it is being developed very, very quickly. So I won't be surprised if that's outdated by the time this video comes out. Or you can go through a mod loader like MultiMC or CurseForge and do it through here. Now, if you've installed Fabric manually, it will come up with this installation in your Minecraft launcher that you can just run and then it'll create a mod folder for you that you can just dump the jar files into. Or if you went through the Forge option, you can just create a custom profile choose 1.20.4 fabric and then just create that and then you can go in here run it at least once to get the mod folder and then you can open the folder through here and then the mod folder is just available and if you do end up needing fabric api because a lot of mods do that's also just available on the fabric website and that is pretty much it which is very strange if you've ever seen one of these videos trying to recreate legacy version in minecraft there's usually a lot of different mods and texture packs and stuff but legacy 4j has pretty much all of it. It feels weird even calling this video a tutorial. Now the developers of this mod have actually put together an official mod pack called Reconsole that has Legacy 4J and a ton of other stuff, but I'm just going to be covering the base mod in this video. Now the first thing you see when you load the mod is something like this, which just immediately shows you that this mod is more than just a texture pack. You can see that they've actually recreated the console edition GUI pretty perfectly including the new world screen uh now you'll see that there is a few texture packs that are preloaded this mod for uh different console aspects like the water and stuff that came with the 1.13 update it doesn't actually come with any of the actual legacy console edition texture packs like plastic texture pack or fantasy pack but you can download those on your own online if you want them but you can just see that they've put all the options here and all the java edition options you know the experimental data packs and you can see this works all just like legacy console edition now i this mod does have controller support i can't personally get my controller to work with it i use a nintendo switch well a third party nintendo switch controller so it probably doesn't have native support but mouse and keyboard works just fine in case you guys are worried about that anyway let's just go ahead and create a brand new world so i can show you not quite everything in this mod there is a lot one of the first things you notice when you actually get into the game is the hotbar is actually raised up off the bottom of the screen like it is in console edition. Now you can change the settings for that in the user interface settings. I'm just going to shrink it a little bit because it's a little bit more comfortable in my screen. You can also see the little player in the left corner and different tooltips popping up as you see new blocks and get achievements. But everything does look a little bit off. It doesn't look nearly as bright or inviting as the legacy console version does. But that's where some of the really cool stuff comes in because the developers of this mod rewrote the entire lighting engine to match the console version. So you have a gamma bar that works pretty much, if not exactly, identical to the legacy console version. So I'm just going to bump it up there because I really like the bright, you know, desaturated feel of the console versions. I'm also just going to adjust my FOV. I'm pretty sure 67 is the closest to console version from what people have experimented with with the mod so we can do that to match it or if you want you can just bump it up all the way if you want to because all the java edition uh settings are all still in here so you can bump it up to quake pro if you want just like java edition with the console graphics and it works pretty fine this isn't meant to be a complete one-to-one -one remake of the Legacy Console Editions. When you're actually going through gameplay and stuff, it's pretty close, pretty much. I think, yeah, the snow does fall in this version like it does in console version. There's one of the little little Easter eggs you get. Easter egg is not the right word. It's just one of the features that they bring back from Legacy Console Version into Java Edition. A lot of this mod is really just merging the two in hopefully the most seamless way possible. And that includes, if we open this up, the inventory. You can see I have an offhand. Most of console edition didn't have an offhand if I remember correctly, but Java edition does, so you have that. 
Okay, it did have an offhand, but only for like shields and totems and stuff. But this works just like Java Edition. You can pull blocks in there, you can place them, and just do all the same things you can do in Java Edition. One of the big things that's changed though, and this is personally one of the most exciting things for me. Uh, let's go ahead and craft some wooden planks because if we open up E, it actually comes up with the console edition crafting menu. This is one thing I have never seen recreated perfectly in any mods before. This is the thing that really got my attention on this mod that this is serious. Like these guys are really doing probably the best job for the legacy console community right now. And you can see on the bottom of the screen, you can navigate with your arrow keys and stuff, or you can just click around like with the mouse button. So let's go ahead, craft some spruce planks just like that. Now keep in mind the console crafting won't actually work on the name tags, wait. The name tags have highlights. I didn't notice that before. Okay, <laughs> that's super cool. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, the console crafting doesn't actually work on servers. So you do need to go in and just enable the classic crafting system to be able to use that correctly. So you can just have this. The vanilla recipe book, I think is also enabled by default. I think I just turned it off for this video. Uh, it is, you can see visually, it's a little bit buggy at the moment, but keep in mind how much this mod has already done. And in about six months, obviously I don't know how long development was before the mod came out six months ago, but yeah, I wouldn't be worried about stuff like this for very long. These developers have been very busy already, and they are taking suggestions if you do find stuff like that. For example, one thing I'm noticing is that the elytra flying doesn't actually turn your screen, which there are mods for that already on Java Edition, so if you can't wait for that, uh, you can just download one of those, but hopefully that will be in the mod sometime. Also, I'm looking at this, and you can see the lights are flashing. The light updates work actually just like the console edition does, which I didn't realize would also be a side effect of them rewriting the lighting engine, but hey, there's that. Just a cool little thing. <laughs> Another thing you'll notice as we walk around is that there's always music playing in the background. In console versions, there was no timer or anything for the music to play. It just played continuously. When one song ended, another one began. In Java Edition, it's a little bit different. A song, a new song plays at sunset and sunrise. So you have like two music tracks a day, but this mod brings back the constant music, which is really interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and quit out. And you can also see that there is an exit without saving option, which Java Edition has never had, if I remember correctly. You can also play through the tutorial world. The, the tutorial itself isn't actually functional at the moment. I'm not sure if it's going to be, or if it's just going to be a world you can walk through, but basically, yeah, you can just walk out here without the invisible barrier <laughs> stopping you. And you can see the 1.13 console edition water that's in this version. I think this is the 1.13 tutorial world, which is I think the most recent on PS4 and Xbox 360. But let's go back again into the create a new world screen because custom super flats to anybody. Now Java technically has a custom super flat feature, but it's very, very janky. It's very hard to get right uh, if you are not already familiar with it. But this works just like it does in the conservations. If I want 224 layers of mangrove planks, I can have 224 layers of mangrove planks. <laughs> I mean, come on. Something like this is only something you could easily achieve in the old console versions. Just an endless void of diamond ore full of mobs. Although we can also just turn it to peaceful, I think. At least, I think I should be able to, but I can't find it in any of the settings. <laughs> oh god, I've I've never actually seen the new bats in Minecraft before. That was very jarring for me. <laughs> and let's go ahead and just load up a copy of Stampy's Lovely World, because why not? And with all the new blocks and stuff, you can really just see what this would have looked like if the console versions had never been replaced by Bedrock, which, in my opinion, I'm sorry, but like, it's just not... <laughs> I would gladly take a world where Legacy Console Edition just never stopped and Bedrock just stayed on phones. You can also see that the fog is quite a bit different. In Console Edition, the fog actually starts really, really close to your player and just fades super gradually into the distance instead of just like covering up like the last chunk of your render distance. And just like everything else, you have options for that. Let's go ahead and actually bump up my render distance all the way and just show you what Console Edition would have looked like with 32 chunks. My computer is straining quite a bit because I don't have sodium installed. 
you know, it's actually leveled out at a pretty solid 50 frames a second, so I will take that. This is what a world without Bedrock would have looked like on modern consoles. On the flip side, you can also just go the Xbox 360 route, bump this all the way down to 10 chunks, uh, and change my resolution to 720p. Except that's not actually changing anything. That's just a placeholder for now, I assume. <laughs> there we go. Reloading the game changes that up. So if you want the crunchy Xbox 360 feel, you get that. But with that, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it here. If you guys want me to make another video going through and finding all the little nitty-gritty details they brought back, like the fact that there is a third-person eating animation now, yeah, let me know. And if there's anything specific you want me to investigate, also just leave a comment that I can just go in and try to see how many details I can find in here. And also, just find stuff that can be added later. The mod developers have actually set up a Discord to share updates and screenshots and sneak peeks and everything, uh, and also take suggestions for things that they can also add to the game. Like I mentioned before, the Elytra flying, which I'm actually pretty sure is already on the top of their radar. I'm pretty sure they're already working on that. Yeah, go support them over there, but with that, I think I'm just going to leave it here. If you're brand new to the channel, because I've been getting a lot of new people recently, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you stick around for a while. <laughs> but with that, like I said, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!